We hear about all the time when females are concerned about women are entering menopause. We're concerned about menopause because unfortunately women will have many deficits. They can have issues in terms of their bone health deteriorating because of lack of estrogen and progesterone and poor sleep, lack of cognition problem with focusing, their workouts may deteriorate because of lack of hormones. We also hear about decreased energy, problems with weight gain, problems with breaking down sugar, increased risk of diabetes, and so on and so on and so on. Some other data to throw at you, quickly in terms of menopause and overall aging. For every year below 50 that you go premature menopause, you will potentially lose 2% of your lifetime. That's been shown numerous times. In addition, we now know that women who have menopause until they're 55 will live an average of two years longer than women who have end their menopause early at the age of 40. So the point of all this is our goals should be in terms of general health, and in terms of lo longevity and health span to control menopause, extend menopause, not do things that are going to diminish menopause. Things like birth control pills, exposure to toxins, lack of hormones that are due to stress or lack of sleep. Other things in terms of regulating insulin levels, decreasing inflammation. All these things are associated with women either having lower female hormones or going into premature menopause. Unfortunately, there are some women that surgically do un to unforeseen things like cancer or severe endometriosis or severe fibroids or other medical conditions do need to have an early hysterectomy and potentially removal of the ovaries and there are hopefully can be replaced depending on what the situation is with some type of synthetic hormones. This should be part of the norm not something that's initiated just by a patient. There is so much importance in of, of females maintaining their hormone production and aging. We know that there's an increased risk in heart disease who women who have early menopause. We know there's an increased risk of dementia in women who have early menopause. There's an increased risk in diabetes in women who have early menopause. Many medical conditions are linked to having early menopause. We need to control it and help women age better and live better. The key there is living better, not have the symptoms of brain fog, not have the symptoms of fatigue, not have the symptoms of weight gain, especially in the belly. This can hopefully be resolved or at least improved upon. There are things that are out there now now, there are things that are coming down the pike in the near future. An article came out in the Wall Street Journal in the last couple of weeks showing some of the new things that are coming available, that are being studied. They're not ready to be used currently, but hopefully in the next two to five years. Again, everything depends on how things progress. So first part of this is, like I mentioned before, working on things that can help manage your hormones currently. That is making sure that you're getting seven hours of sleep, maintaining a circadian rhythm. That's linked to having better hormones. Avoid toxins that we call endocrine disruptors. Endocrine disruptors are chemicals like BPA and plastics, phthalates, flame retardants, that actually will block the function of hormones like estrogen, testosterone, progesterone. You want to both avoid those toxins and things that you're having in your home, cooking equipment, what's on your bed, your hair care products, your skincare products. You want to be as clean as possible. Second to that, you want to exercise. Exercise has been shown to help maintain hormone levels almost as well as anything else beyond giving yourself the hormone. Maintain your weight, eat appropriately, because we know that once your weight gets higher, the hormones may be altered. Those are things that you can do now. We can, are now using chemicals and supplements that may help regular hormones now. Things like chrysin, which help with estrogen. Things like green tea. Things like NAC may help with controlling hormones. Melatonin actually may help in regulating your hormones. Things like chromium, a product called acromancy, which is a gut flora bacteria. All these things may help us regulate hormones currently. So we talk about lifestyle changes, we talk about regulating hormones naturally, and then we go into the things that we can do to help that may be available sooner than later. We'll get back to that in one second. Let's go to something that we didn't talk about. We're gonna talk about proper ovarian function. For our bodies, to females' bodies to produce adequate hormones, we have to talk about adequate female hormone production and adequate ovarian function. A lot of women out there now are having what they call premature female ovarian failure, meaning that the ovaries are not helping the body produce LH and FSH that work on the pituitary gland, other glands, and, and the connection to the brain, and allow the body to produce adequate amount of hormone. We are studying that as well. We know that there's a link between that and toxins, as I mentioned before with general hormones. We know there's a, a, a link between a premature ovarian function and insulin resistance. We, we talked about that with using things like chromium, acromantia, 
We can use a peptide called MOTC. There may be an association as well between that and using something, the GLP-1 agonist, things like Mongerno, Ozempic, some of the oral pills that may be coming out in the next year. And we're also using NAC, we're using melatonin. NAC also may increase the amount of follicles that women have, which will increase their fertility, not only help with their hormones, but for women to have adequate hormone production, the ovaries need to be working appropriately, which links us to two things. We are now studying a, a cancer drug called rapamycin, both because of its effect on the ovary for use in fertility in conjunction with some other things. And some early studies have shown some success. It helps because it induces autophagy, which is the body's ability to, to break down the cells and recycle them and let the body produce new ones. Uh, it also decreases inflammation. It also helps produce more healthy ovaries. We're also working on a hormone called AMH, anti-malarian hormone, which we know there's associated between lower AMH levels and decreased fertility. We are working on now are either or prescription medications that can help elevate L AMH levels or using uh, what we call recombinant or made AMH to help women both have better ovarian function, increase fertility for longer, and decrease the risk that I broke down initially. Other things that we're looking at to help women control and delay menopause is we're looking at doing things like diet. We know there's a chance that doing a keto diet may help women preserve ovarian function and improve their hormones on a long-term basis. We also know that, I mentioned it briefly, exercise, doing four to five days a week of cardio and resistance training may help women maintain their hormones for a longer period of time. What we wanna do is you want to have your hormone levels checked at least once a year via blood by doing tests such as a total estrad estradiol, estriol, Estrone. Estriol is the one associated with menopause. These are other forms of estrogen that give us an idea of where your female hormones are at this point in your life. You want to get progesterone. You also want to get your DHA sulfate checked, as well as your free and total testosterone and your sex hormone binding globin. All these levels together are going to help your healthcare provider work on maintaining your female hormones. So here's a summary of what we're talking about here. Our goal is to lengthen menopause increase the ability the body's ovaries to produce the hormones longer and then give some add-ons. That could be supplements, that could be exercise and sleep, that could be hopefully in the near future giving recombinant anti-malarian hormone or some type of medication to help increase it. And then that will help women go into that first category when they're going to menopause after 55 and not having women or limiting the amount of women that are having premature ovarian failure or having women that are having early menopause less than 40. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them into the comments section and please feel free to tune for more on the YouTube channel that we talk about health and wellness optimization and tools to help your life. Stay tuned.